Hi there, this is an Excel video around um, an annual summary of training monitoring data. So I'm going to do some summary tables and then produce some dynamic charts that allow a user to select um, days, months or, or weeks and see the appropriate data appear. So um, the first step is to do a data summary. We've got um, four wellness variables, a body weight, some RPE and some heart rate loading. So I just need to do some quick summary formulas that allow these tables to be a bit more complete. The first thing I need is um, I guess a title for a week and the easiest way to get this list of weeks is just to add seven each time. So to save time I'm just going to do that. And similarly over here where it says months I'm just going to do that as well. And if you do the first two and it's in a pattern, Excel figures it out and allows you to just drag down. Now at the bottom of this week one, I actually need one more cell and I'll explain the reason for that later. You notice I did that at the bottom of the months as well. So this um, equation is just an average ifs. And basically what I have to do is say that so long as the date is greater than or equal to um, the week name and less than or equal to next week's name then include the data. So control shift down arrow selects that range F4 locks it, we only want to lock the row numbers so that we can drag it across. The dates we want to lock both row and columns. Now the criteria is slightly different. You have to use your um, double quotes and ampersands a little bit to get it to work, but um, it's a relatively simple concept if you can get your head around that. I'll finish this equation and then I'll just explain it. So we know it works, which is great. So very helpful in Excel now are these colored boxes. So what this equation is saying is that give me the average of whatever's in the blue box, so the weight, the body weights, so long as both criteria are met. Criteria one is that the day name is less than this purple box, is greater than or equal to this purple box, I'm sorry, and that the day range is also less than the brown box. And so if I pull this across, it's not going to work because I forgot to lock one of my cell references. Amateur mistake, I'm sorry and I double click and I send that down. Now the reason why I had to put an extra one on the bottom is because this last row is referencing a date further ahead. This data is not necessary. And if I scoop that out, paste it in there, and drag the dates across, it should work just fine. And aside from some formats that aren't ideal, uh, everything was fine there. So I'm not going to spend too much time mucking around on the formats of that. I'm just going to move on to the next part because it's much more interesting. I'm going to use some named ranges cell A3 I've called days, cell K3 I've called weeks, and cell U3 I've called months. What I've also done is created a named range of all the variables that we're looking at. So I'm going to add a sheet now. It's called, let's say, report. I just want to add some drop-down boxes to it. 
firstly I want to add a drop down box that allows a user to select days, weeks or months. That's easy. Second thing I want to do is add a drop down box to allow a user to select variables. So let's say soreness. I want to add just going to do it the easy way first of all and we'll sort it out later in a bit more complex fashion using a spin button or something like that all right so what I'm going to try and do now is create a dynamic uh, named range that allows us to plot whichever data we choose using these um, selection options alone. And so sometimes it's a little bit complex, but it shouldn't be too hard once we step through it. So I'm going to go to formulas and define name. So I'm going to call this chart dates. So the first thing we've got now is whatever's in cell B3, weeks, days or months, that also corresponds to a named range. So it knows that it, the, the data starts at either days, weeks or months, which are cell references in the data and workings page. The offset function, when it's used inside the name manager, has five variables. An anchor point, we've just done that. How many rows and columns before the data begins? So the number of rows before the data begins is one. The number of columns before the data begins is um, basically referencing to which column in the table. Now uh, we have to Add one because we have the weak numbers in the system. Then we want to say that the size of the data set is two weeks, four weeks, 10 weeks, 20 weeks, depending on what we choose in cell B9. So I'm simply going to say that it is Twenty by one. Next thing I'm going to do is just copy that. And paste it inside another named range. The only difference that I'm going to look for is that I actually need to have a little bit um, of something fancy in there in place of this one. If we're going to choose soreness, we need to know what column is soreness in. And we can find that using the match, match function. Now hopefully that will allow us to do that. I'm just going to check that data and find out if I've got it right. Now, I haven't got it quite right, but this should be a bit better. Perfect. So that's giving us the first 20 weeks of data for soreness. And that seems like it's exactly what we're asking it to do. 
weeks, soreness, 20 data points. So let's see if I can chart that. One of the best things you can do is just select some data create a chart and then just modify it a bit. So I'm going to try that. Take out all the cell references and paste in our named ranges. Now what it doesn't like here um, and doesn't understand is the format of our axis. It sees dates so it wants to plot every day when really um, we don't want that. I usually just choose text axis and your problems tend to go away pretty quickly. So if I change that to 45, I get 45 sets of data. If I change it to 12, I get 12 sets of data. If I change that to months, I get the monthly data. If I change that to sleep, I get the sleep data, actual weight in kgs, RP load, etc. So it's kind of working the way we want it. Um, Using the named ranges in that fashion can be a little bit complicated sometimes, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be. What I'll do is just fancy it a little bit um, by putting in a spinner button. Um, I'll just dump them here. You can worry about it later. So given that we could choose days, we need to have the maximum value um, of if we say that there's always going to be at least 10 points on the chart we should choose the maximum value minus 10 so let's say 355 all right let's see what happens good Excellent, so we've got that spinner butter working. And I'll do another one. How much data do we want to show? I think. Um, what you want to have is at least, we decided 10, wasn't it? And a maximum of 100, let's say. Cool. So now I can increase the number of data points. It's probably a good idea to both align the, the dates and get some sort of custom date format so that things don't go all messed up when you are playing around with quite large sets of data on the graph. I always like just day and month. So it's not super pretty because we haven't done the tidying up part but we can put custom titles on there if we wanted to make the graph look a bit nicer we could potentially add a rolling average or things like that if we really wanted to you know there's all sorts of ways to suddenly add some value um, to these graphs by by tidying it up but there's an example of how to make something like that work. Next video, um, we can look at uh, 
how to repeat that process, maybe even make it better by using a pivot table. See you next time.